All right, guys, what's going on? It is Brandon at the ball yard, target field here after the Twins fall 4-1 to the Texas Rangers fall to 2-1 in the four-game set that will wrap up here at target field tomorrow. Cole Hamels absolutely dazzling for a complete game. Uh, let's see here, complete game, four hitter, five strikeouts and a walk, uh, 96 pitches, but he was in absolute control all night long. And so, yeah, uh, not a terrible start for Kyle Gibson, who got a little bit rocky early on, but did manage to get the Twins, uh, get the Twins into the sixth inning. Again, certainly not his best start, certainly not his worst, but that probably says more about the fact that he's got an ERA at 6.03. So it's, uh, it was a pretty, pretty tough night for the Twins. Um, I suspect we'll get a lot of comments on the offense, and again, I get it. You know, you don't want Eduardo Escobar batting third or Chris Jimenez batting cleanup on any given night. But keeping in mind that Miguel Sano was injured and not available, as Paul Molliver said after the game, and that Joe Maurer hasn't hit lefties well, and that Jason Castro, like I tweeted, is pretty much a non-factor offensively right now, it was the best of what's around. So, again, not an ideal situation, but given the 25-man roster in its current construction, it's about the best they could have uh, could have handled. Again, you know, obviously, one hit apiece for four different players, including Dozier, Escobar, Buxton, and Polanco. Yeah, again, not exactly a murderer's row. So I totally understand people being upset with the offense. But again, this is a Twins team that came into yesterday's game with an 84, uh, 84 weighted runs created plus against lefties and 88 after last night's drubbing of Martin Perez. And I, I suspect that'll be going back down to the 85, 86 range after tonight. Just nothing going for the Twins offensively outside of an A. Ray Adrianza RBI ground out after Byron Buxton had, had reached, stole second, moved to third on a bad throw, and then came home on a, again, a, a chopper to Mike Napoli. But a couple Twins cut down on the bases early in the game that came back to hurt them, especially Brian Dozier being thrown out on a pickoff play. Eduardo Escobar trying to stretch a double on a, uh, a read. I'm really not sure what he saw, considering the ball was in front of him the whole time. So, again, yeah, uh, the trouble is that you don't know in the moment, that early in the game, that those plays are going to be as pivotal as they are. Then again, too, you come back to the ninth inning with Taylor Rogers hitting Carlos Gomez. Uh, I'm not going to say it was intentional, but I think we all have a pretty good idea of what happened there. His hardest fastball of the night, 95 miles per hour, right into the, the hind end of of Carlos Gomez and Gomez comes around to score doesn't matter well yeah because if Brian Dozier is if that run doesn't score Brian Dozier represents the tying run in the ninth inning rather than just another run to try to get back into the game against a guy in Cole Hamels who is dealing. Paul Molitor did say after the game he doesn't like to tip his hat to opposing pitchers but with that said too um, obviously aware that the Twins could not adjust to the Hamels changeup. I tweeted about the Hamels changeup all night long. I suspect when we break down the film and go to brooksbaseball.net, you will see five or six at least swinging strikes on the changeup tonight. I know he got three and one at bat against Eddie Rosario alone. So obviously Cole Hamels looked like vintage Cole Hamels tonight. He has not looked like vintage Cole Hamels all season long, but this should, I believe, drop his ERA down. Yeah, 3.59. So Pretty good drop for Hamels there. I believe that he was at like 4.01 or 4.03 coming into the game. Um, and again, the run two was unearned because of the error. So basically, in the eyes of earned run average, he threw a nine in a complete game shutout. So uh, very, very strong effort. Um, Twins pitchers, though, you can't say enough about the bullpen. Bo Shears gives them two thirds of, two -thirds of uh, shutout work, two really strong innings from Ryan Presley. And... Uh, Taylor Rogers again, three strikeouts, strikes off the side, but um, Gomez comes around to score on a, what seemed like kind of an unnecessary uh, bit to put him on base. But, um, you know, what can I say? Uh, I did see somebody say this is what this lineup does to a guy. Yeah, I think that's, that's fair to say. I mean, you, you kind of got the offense that you expected. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, it just was what came to roost. Doubles is on Twitter, and again, too, if you want to send messages when we're doing these live ones from Target Field, Legends Club, as you can see, feel free to send them to me on the feed as well here on Periscope, but you can send them to me on Twitter at Brandon underscore Warren, because those are going to stay there just a little bit longer. I bring the, the laptop here with me out into the air-conditioned Legends Club where I have a little bit more freedom to, to do this show. 
So again, Double says track record versus Hamels, notwithstanding either rather see Mauer bat right-handed at cleanup than Jimenez. Yeah, I mean I get that too. Um, Jimenez has like a 740 OPS I think against lefty, so not exactly the guy you want cleaning up. But again, with Miguel Sano on the lineup, it's not perfect. They were targeting today to give Mauer the day off. He'll be back in there tomorrow with uh, righty on the mound. So I don't know. I mean, it, part of me, part of me wants to be like, well, with Sano out, you got to rework your plan to to have uh, you know have have uh, and see someone like you see right behind us. Part of me thinks you got to got to get right in on this. Uh, yeah, we got Rip Bollinger, MLB.com fame. How's it going? That's no fame at all. No, we were talking about uh, people said they would rather have seen Joe Mauer bat right-handed <laughs> at cleanup than uh, Chris Jimenez, and I was like, <laughs> part of me sees like the idea that I get Molitor had planned for this day off for Mauer, but do you would alter your plan with Miguel Sano as far as uh, you know? Do you yeah. maybe maybe have Mauer set a later day? But Mauer hasn't hit lefties. He hasn't hit yeah. Hamels. I, I know Bottom Day and all yeah. that. Still, look at that lineup. And you have Adrianza at first. It's just yeah, like, that was weird. I think Adrianza looked pretty good at first base. He's played a little bit. In the yeah, that's right. He's so, the Giants a little bit, so yeah, um, it just it was a weird game. Again, Hamels was dealing. Mauer said he didn't want to tip his cap. He, he was very very certain yeah, about he that. Doesn't use that term very often. Doesn't use that term very often. So yeah, you get some people checking in here. Nice. Um, yeah, it, it just kind of is what it is when you got Miguel Sano on the shelf and. This is a team, yeah, 80, 88 weighted runs created plus against left-handed pitching. It's just not a team no, built yeah, to hit. Have anybody than Grossman, maybe. Not a team hit to, built to hit lefties. And yeah, Dozier, I saw, Dozier is lefty, though. Well, I saw somebody suggest Dozier hitting cleanup and Grossman at leadoff. In a vacuum, in a vacuum yeah. that makes sense, but then you're getting fewer plate appearances for Dozier, more for Grossman, who was already hitting second. In one game vacuum, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now, I might hit Robbie leadoff moving forward because you want Dozier yeah, to grab the It's not going to happen, but at this point, Dozier is pretty much a leadoff guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that. But I don't know. What can I say? Um, thanks for hanging out. I yeah, for a second. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. If, you, if you are, uh, if you're available more, we'll have to have yeah, Red on here because it's kind of fun. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. That was Red Bollinger, MLB.com. Kind of fun little pop-in guest here as we are uh, wrapping up our program here. I didn't see some of these questions you guys sent, so feel free to send some more because I had my head turned to be a, a hospitable guest. But um, yeah, just a, a very listless night. I think it started off with a pop-up rain delay of 45 minutes. Where I don't think anybody really saw it coming, and um, yeah, it was just a just a tough night for the offense. Again, I saw someone say Presley has looked better of late. Two strikeouts, both three pitch varieties. I believe it was three straight curveballs to Nomar Mazera, and two. Oh, who was the other one? Um, I want to say Belcher, but I don't think that's right. But anyway, um, obviously, obviously looked Presley looked like the guy who could, in theory, close for the Twins eventually. But you can't just shrug your shoulders and forget that this stretch where he's got an ERA over six happened. So we'll see what happens because if he can get back to what he's doing right now, if that can be the new Ryan Presley or the old Ryan Presley coming back, I don't see any reason why he can't work his way into that late inning situation because obviously Matt Belisle, first of all, may be traded in August. Second of all, he's he's been good of late, but he doesn't really have the stuff you want from a ninth inning guy or a high leverage guy. Again, he's, he's lasted this long in the big leagues because he's, he's really good but um you know it's uh you know you're not going to want him doing that forever taylor rogers again struggles with right-handed hitters at times and maybe doesn't look necessarily like a guy you want pitching full innings in ninth innings you know you might want him to throw the seventh when you're facing a seven eight nine hitters or something like that but i'm just not sure that i see him um you know i'm not sure i see him being a guy who can pitch the ninth inning consistently i see martin schlegel Suggesting too that the twin or that Presley looks better as far too as uh, with, a, with a lower mile per hour fastball he looks better. He did hit 96 tonight, which is not 97 like he's done before. Um, but he was 94, 96 tonight. Yeah, maybe get a little more movement because that seems to kind of happen when guys throw a little bit slower. They have a little more time for the ball to move, a little bit more motion too. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I did see someone suggesting to Mitch Garver coming up. That would obviously be, you know, Garber had, a, I think, another home run today. And it's about time he gets up here. I'm not sure what the path is there. It's probably sending down a reliever at some point. Um, but I think that that's a good idea. Would I send down Alan Buznitz and bring up Mitch Garver tomorrow? Yes, I would. Because I think you need Garver's right-handed bat on your bench. And, frankly, in the mix behind the plate, if Castro continues to be, you know, just up and down and not particularly high up when he's up, 
And Yo Jimenez gives you some depth there, but Garver's been playing left, he's been playing first. You can take some DH at bats, you can move Robbie Grossman around when there's a lefty, and you might want to sit Kepler. I really think you could easily find a way for Mitch Garver to get in the lineup three or four days per week, which makes a ton of sense at this point. So I, I have to believe Garver can't be that far away. I don't know. We'll see. Um, get your final questions in here. I'm going to be back at Target Field tomorrow, but as a fan, it is my sixth wedding anniversary, so my wife and I are going to come hang out, I think, in probably section 127. So if you see me carrying a little baby around, please feel free to come say hi. Um, I'd love to meet people that enjoy or even just consume any of the stuff that I put out there. And again, if you have ideas to make this better or make this different, we're, we're up for a, a lot of different things. Today is um, the first day that I uploaded audio into my pregame story after I talked to Levi Weaver, excuse me, about Hamels and the Rangers. So we'll, we'll see what happens there because that was a pretty cool feature to get some information from him. Uh, very dynamic talent, former musician who now writes for the Rangers. You can find him on Twitter, at 32 Ephes. So uh, thanks again for, for uh, Levi Weaver for coming and hanging out as well. Uh, I did see Grant Spears suggest going to a six-man rotation with Hector Santiago being foolish. I tend to agree, but he's going to go pitch at Rochester on Wednesday. I get the sense, too, that, yeah, they might want him to come back as a swing man, and then that might be your Buznets move, and then thus maybe there's not room for Garver right now. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think you need to have this many pitchers, but who do you send out? And at some point, do you send out a Presley or a Bo Shears? I don't think you can really do that either. So maybe the move is eventually you trade Bo, uh, Belisle or um, you know something else. Somebody gets hurt, which we don't want to happen, but obviously tends to happen in these things because there's just so many guys and pitching is very uh, in, is inherently risky for injuries. So yeah, um, I saw somebody say, "What does Zach Granite have to do to get back up here?" Uh, frankly, I don't know. He, there's really not a spot first and foremost. Second of all, he really didn't hit while he was up here. Um, you know, I know there was the stretch where he's two for 22, and then he was hot for a while, and then cold for a while, but didn't hit for any power, doesn't have a you know crazy slugging percentage, on-base percentage. He just made contact, which, again, in a vacuum is nice, but when it doesn't come with any pop or you know not a tremendous eye, yeah, it's not going to fly. Yeah, I see Grant chiming in 280 slugging percentage, not good. Yeah, that's that's not going to fly here, both, uh, both literally and figuratively. He's hitting ground balls at like a 54% rate which basically is a poor man's Ben Revere. You're not going to shoehorn that into this outfield alignment. So uh, I still think his future is as a very, very, very good fourth outfielder. Who knows where he can go from there. But I just don't see pushing aside any of the starters or even Robbie Grossman for him at this time. So if they're going to push anyone aside for any bats down at AAA, it's got to be Mitch Garver. Curley says, does Jimenez stay on the roster simply because he's a good clubhouse guy? Um, no, I don't think it's necessarily it. He, he does know how to, he's good at handling a pitching staff. Um, you know, I think that Jimenez is one of their better hitters against left-handed pitching. That's a pretty low bar to clear, I think. You know, it's fair to say I love I love Chris as a guy, and I'm not trying to say he doesn't do other things. But um, he, he's, he hit the ball hard tonight a couple times, and he, you know he's got good launch angle and exit velocity, all the things. It's just it's really hard to evaluate a guy that only plays twice a week too, and they don't want that for Garver. So, I don't know. I think if Garver comes up too, though, he could probably steal some playing time to. Uh, he could steal some playing time from Castro, which is a good thing too, because obviously you want to go with the best guy back there. Garver gets pretty good reviews for his defense, which again is a big part of the deal with uh, with analytics and all that. So, I wouldn't I wouldn't really rule out the fact that Garver could steal a significant amount of playing time when he comes up behind the plate which is nothing to say of a DH left field first base or, or whatever. Um, Kerry Fry asking, was LeClerc warming up alongside him or just Claudio? Uh, they did they did announce that, um, that LeClerc and Claudio were both warming up. I'm not sure if I saw both or not. I thought I only saw one. But they did announce it in the press box that they were both warming up. Um, I see Fran the Man saying, why trade Belial? He's been solid in the American League transition. No, I, I don't disagree. He's really done a nice job since that blow up in San Francisco in mid-June. But the honest to goodness thing about this is that he's a free agent at the end of the year. They are not probably not going anywhere. He probably wants to go pitch someplace else where they're maybe having a little bit more of a, a, a pennant race push. And frankly, they need to get a look at the kids. If you can, if you can trade a Matt Belial and get a longer look at a John Curtis 
or uh, Mason Melantakis, who, whoever you want to bring up from AAA, or if you want to clear that space out to bring up Mitch Garver, that does give you an opportunity to get a look at a kid. Again, I, I think Belial has done a great job, especially late, uh, of late, to pitch as well as he has here. Again, especially since the San Francisco uh, game that he got, I think he gave up like three or four earned runs. But, uh, you know, I think that if they're going to move him, it will be in August, and then they'll get a kid up here, whether it's a, a position player or uh, or another pitcher. Um, Jason Vesladal asking, what is Nick Gordon's ETA? I would say sometime next season. I don't think it's going to be this year. I've had a few people ask me if it'll be this year, but first of all, no rush to put him on the 40-man roster. Second of all, there's a log jam at short, and Brian Dozier's got second base locked down. Um, and I say a log jam at short, I don't mean in terms of necessarily guys that are all playing really, really well, but they all deserve a shot. And you really got to see what you got. Adrianza can really pick it. Polanco tonight made that phenomenal play. Um, and it feels like the bat is warming up just a little. And, you know, again, he's been through quite a bit personally this year, so I, I'm not ready to, to write him off quite yet. And Eduardo Escobar is one of the maybe best utility players around. So I, I just don't see an opportunity for Gordon right now to, to come up and help them, even though he's hit eight home runs this year down at Double H Chattanooga, which is, I think, um, eight of the 13 he's hit as a pro or something like that. So uh, I did see Matt Liefeld ask about Bianco Park. I'm not sure I see that happening uh, again. Um, I would personally rather see Garver, just my two cents. It also hurts that Park is not on the 40-man roster. Granted, they have room on the 40, but um, you know, I just think that it's going to be Garver getting a chance before Park. But uh, but we'll see. I think that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for checking out Brandon at the Ball Yard. If you have an idea for a better name for this program, anything, tweet it to me, DM it to me, whatever. Send it to me. Um, I know someone said, be warned. That's too cheesy for me. Uh, or I'm warning you. I, I don't want anything to be kind of a pun. I'm trying to get away from puns in my Twitter game because uh, it's not good. Puns are bad. So anyway, um, thanks for hanging out. Try to come up with a name, and we will uh, maybe give you a, give away a Keith Law book or a Jay Jaffe book or something. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Be well.